All right, welcome everybody to Sako's Tech Spot. Today is gonna be a very interesting video. We are gonna be working on my home network setup. This is probably step one in the many steps to come. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. We're just kinda of gonna go for it. So uh, basically the, the idea here is that we just moved into our new house. Uh, well, my first house to be honest. And now we're going to wire it up with CAT6 and we're gonna start working on the infrastructure before hooking up all sorts of fun devices. So this is gonna be only the first video in a series of videos to come where I show you what I'm gonna be doing with my networking. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so the first step, we just got the first step. It's right here next to me, it's a huge box. And this is gonna be the server rack. Now this is not the traditional type of rack that you're thinking. This is a rack that is wall mounted and it's gonna go right over here, smack dab on this corner. So the main idea here, we're gonna put the, the wall mounted rack, we're gonna drill a hole into this shelving because I do wanna keep the shelving. As you can see, I got a bunch of crap on that already. And then we're gonna drill a hole up top in the ceiling and that is where the wires are gonna go into and spread around the house. So. Yeah, step one is probably the easiest one is get the rack on the wall. Uh, so there's gonna be a little bit of assembly. Not sure how much, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna show the whole assembly of it, but basically we're gonna uh, mount the rack and go from there. And let me show you guys exactly what we're gonna be working with. So I have the rudimentary network set up just so that we have some internet access in the house. But as you can see, this is just a spider web of all sorts of equipment. Now I could zoom in a little bit. That's as good as we're gonna get right now. But I have a couple of hotspots I was testing. We're gonna put these in certain places in the house. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I have this router that's acting as a switch right now. It's just a regular switch. There's no routing going on. The router is actually underneath. That's the Ubiquiti Edge Router 4. And, oh, that, that just got unplugged. No, that was the switch that got unplugged. Anyways, so then we have an edge switch so that's a managed switch and that's gonna be separating the different VLANs we're gonna be using in the house. And then here's the modem in the back. Uh, that's just a Motorola modem uh, up to a gigabit. I think, no, actually up to two gigabits just in case we upgrade in the future. And I have all the power lines back there looking like a mess. So this is what we're gonna be working with. Right now, it looks terrible, but hopefully in the next few videos, it's gonna be looking like an actual networking setup. We are back. It is a new day, if that wasn't obvious. Uh, we finally got this built out and installed. This actually was quite a challenge because number one, it came with kind of rudimentary instructions. It was like three pages long and there's a lot going on in here, um, but I got it working. Look how beautiful that is. Ooh. And if you are interested in this uh, server rack, um, I will put the link in the description so you can go ahead and get it. I got it on Amazon. This was actually refurbished. And to be honest, there isn't really anything wrong with it. There's maybe a scratch here and there, but that could have been from, I don't know, the delivery or whatever. Everything was in there. I was missing one nut, but the box had a hole in it. I'm guessing the nut just kind of slipped out, but it's okay. Uh, basically um, it has these racks that you can uh, move in and out. So depending on the depth of your equipment, you can adjust it. We're gonna have to cross that bridge when we get there. My only other issue was I did not screw it into studs, but I did get 50 pound anchors um, or anchors that can hold 50 pounds and hopefully that suffices. So basically our next step is I'm gonna drill a hole into the shelving right above where there's like these brackets, the, not brackets, but there's holes up here. I could actually bring you guys closer. All right, so there are holes here. And excuse the lighting, you can't really see anything. It's a black box. Uh, there you go. So over here, that's where the cables are gonna come out of. And then I'm gonna make a hole in the shelving right above it. And then we're gonna go up, make a hole over there. And that's how we're gonna run all the cables throughout the house. But that's where we're at so far. So hopefully the next part is gonna be not too bad. It's really hot in the attic. I really don't like going up there. I've been up there already and it sucked, but we gotta do what we gotta do. This is 
This is important. This is the infrastructure. It's gonna hold everything together. All the electronics in the house are gonna be connected here. So it's a huge project and super excited to get started with it. All right, so here it is. This is what we're gonna be using for our cable runs. This is Cat6 cabling that I got from Home Depot. And there it is, beautiful Cat6. And we're just gonna pull it out and measure uh, each cable to where it's going. Here is the office where it's gonna be coming from. And then we're gonna be pulling it down this hallway above the ceiling. And it's gonna be going to various places around the house. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. We're going to be running the cable. It's a lot less cable than I originally planned, but the rest will be for another time. So we have our beautiful holes in the ceiling. Could you pan to the holes, please? Thank you. Um, yes, there are two, because you never know if we're gonna be expanding. It totally was not a mistake. I totally did not hit a stud. Anyways, my beautiful assistant, who is currently manning the camera, is going to help me with running the cables. She will be passing the cables up. I will be in the attic, hence the attire. And she is going to make, make sure this does not bundle up on me as I am indisposed. So, this is the plan. This is where we're at. It was hell making the holes, but here we are. We're almost done with this project, or at least half of it. The internet portion, cameras, it's gonna be part two. We'll come back to that later. All right, everybody, we are back. It's a whole new day. Let me explain where we are so far. We ran the cables up the hole. I don't think you can see a hole, so I'm gonna show it to you. There it is. We ran the cables in there, and they are going now throughout the different parts of the house. Um, so far, I'm only working on the infrastructure. I'm gonna have to do this hellish job once again, once we're ready for the security cameras. But for right now, We've got the cables for the infrastructure and one camera because the camera is going next to one of the access points. Irrelevant. Point is, this was a complete pain in the ass. Going into the attic of this particular house was less than pleasant. How about that? Let's just leave it at that. Basically, we ran everything. We have a lot of excess cable, which was kind of my end goal, just in case something happens on either end of these cables. So we have three of them going into kind of the central area of the house. We have one of them for the girlfriend's uh, office, and then we have two others for uh, various access points that we're gonna be putting. We're gonna have four access points. Two of them will be pointing to the main Wi-Fi, including the guest Wi-Fi. And then we're gonna have a separate access point for our security system and a separate access point for our home automation. Um, things like the Chromecast, smart switches, smart lights, things like that. Um, just so there's nice containerization of all the different networks and that there's an added layer of security. Okay, several days have passed since the last segment and a lot has changed since then. So cables were capped, the access points were set up and configured, and we have Wi-Fi all over the house. So mission accomplished for the most part. So let's go over a couple of things that didn't work out. Uh, number one, I had an old crimper that I was using and that didn't work well for the new Cat6 caps that were pull through style. Um, I had the old one where you have to make sure it's all aligned before you put the wires in the cap and then you crimp it. The pull through is much more user friendly. It's a lot easier and ultimately it worked a lot better. So I had to go out and I had to get a new crimper for that. And that was about 50 bucks. Uh, it's a little pricey, but honestly, there was nothing else I could really do unless I was going to order on Amazon and wait a couple of days delaying the entire project. So we bit the bullet, bought the stupid crimper for 50 bucks. Next, after capping all the cables, everything seemed to be going fine until we started having issues with our main Wi-Fi SSID. And there's two access points that have that SSID, so we have a lot more coverage in the house. And if the device was connecting to the access point that was acting a little faulty, then we were experiencing uh, issues where we couldn't get an IP address from the router. So luckily the edge router has a diagnostic tool built in, which could tell you if there's any issues within the cable. 
and it was actually able to tell me that it was 60 feet away, which is pretty much the full length of the cord. So having that info was really useful because then I just went and I recapped it and everything was up and running fine. No more issues after that. Another issue that wasn't really much of an issue, it was more of a situation that happened where I only had two POE injectors for the access points I planned on using, but I was lucky enough to get my hands on uh, two other access points, but I didn't have POE injectors for those access points. So what I had to do was install a outlet box in the ceiling hideout area where all the access points are sitting. Luckily, there was already existing lighting that was going there. So we removed all the lighting, but the cables were still there. And I was able to utilize that to create an, um, a set of outlets up there. So uh, having that now is actually a, a huge plus because I actually did want to put an LED strip up there and I didn't want to hardwire to the actual house. So now I have an outlet where I could just plug something in like normal, I put a power strip up there and bada bing, bada boom, that was good to go. All right, other than those minor issues, everything else went really beautifully. Everything is set up, the internet is working flawlessly, the VLANs are up and running. Um, everything is just perfect right now. Uh, I do wanna expand. Uh, we are going to install another switch later on that's gonna be for our security cameras, but that's gonna be down the line, so nothing to worry about right now, at least. Uh, another thing I was concerned about was potentially having interference issues between the access points because there are four access points right next to each other and I'll throw some b-roll so you see what I'm talking about and I was worried that have, being that close together it would cause a lot of inter wireless interference but luckily it doesn't seem to be an issue at least right now right now I did try to put them on different channels so that could potentially mitigate it I don't know but it doesn't really matter because there's no issues everything is really running smoothly. I also went back and I cleaned up the area with all the equipment in that rack and I did the best I can right now. Uh, all the cables are labeled which is good uh, and the only thing is that it does need a power strip in there. Uh, the cables for the power are just kind of hanging out in there um, with a multi outlet thing I have. Uh, I, I need to replace that and you'll see what I'm talking about. I also need to get a UPS for all that equipment because being in Northern California, you just never know when PG&E, our electrical company, is gonna shut off the grid in our area, whether it's for fire safety or just incompetence. So you never know when that happens. We need a UPS so I could shut everything down in a controlled way if it does happen. And that's pretty much it. The infrastructure is up and running for the most part. Uh, I'll be expanding and I'll probably make updates as we go along. So make sure to follow for those uh, upcoming videos. Also, if you wanna have more detailed information on how I set everything up, feel free to leave a comment, like the video, let me know and I'll be happy to go over exactly how everything is set up. Uh, this is probably the most complex network I've ever had to create and manage myself. So it was really exciting. It was a really good time. A lot of um, learning occurred and pretty happy with how everything is going so far. Also, make sure to follow my Twitch because I do a lot of random tech things in there. Like when I was cleaning up the server area, I call it a server rack. It's not a server rack because there's no server in there, but you know what I mean. When I was cleaning that up, I was streaming on Twitch. So if you want to hang out, uh, I have a couple of other projects coming up that are probably not going to go on YouTube. Like I'm going to set up my gaming station and that's going to be a really exciting time too. So make sure to follow on Twitch if you are interested in seeing that. And that's going to wrap it up. Thanks again for watching. Once again, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video.